Once touted as the Turkish Messi after Borussia Dortmund acquired his services back in 2016, Emre Moore has quite literally vanished from the football scene. When the world needed him most, he vanished. He instantly became a career mode fan favourite and a future world superstar. On the other hand, it's reported that his lack of professionalism, attitude problems and distractions away from the game has seen his career take a plateau, if not a major downfall. Being harshly criticised by his own coaches, the media and fans in both Germany in Spain. It's time for a true role model oh, no. to mentor the misguided Turkish talent to get his career back on track where it belongs. Today, we're reviving, if not rescuing, Emre Moore in aim of him surpassing his potential and achieving the success he deserves as the Turkish Messi. It's a career relaunch. Today, we're starting on brand new beginnings as the right midfielder. He's only 21 years of age, he still has plenty of time, and he's turning up with a clean slate. Slight teething issues we've had to bypass in this one as the team he's currently at in real life, Olympiakos, the Greek out Fit, we can't use them in career mode. So we've gone ahead and taken matters into our own hands. I've drafted him into a team where I can see Emre relishing in. We could have gone for Celta Vigo, one of his previous clubs and his most recent team, or return him back to Dortmund for a second chance at redemption. However, we've gone for a wild card option. Atalanta in Serie A will be his destination, a team notorious for turning nothing into something. Uncovering diamonds in the rough, La Dea deploy a strict high press mentality, counter attack centric system that could suit. Emre Moore like no other. Trusting our faith in the Turks, so Emre Moore, it's the last chance, your last dance here in Bergamo. The unit himself, Jared HD, is also dropping some similar career revival-esque videos on his channel, so make sure you check them out. Link in the description if you haven't already. We're just two Aussies out here trying to do our part to save players' careers, and let's be real here, it's the most wholesome content you're going to be seeing in 2020. I know it might be a while for some of you guys who haven't heard of him in a while or just have forgotten about him completely. I'll allow yourselves to reintroduce each other. Here is the Turkish right midfielder. He's still only 21. Like I mentioned earlier, there are plenty of seasons for him to realize his potential. Five foot seven with a three star weak foot, four star skill moves. He's got a bit of flair about him. With a medium attack and work rate, low defensive, that is exactly where he's going to play for this Atalanta squad in that right midfield slot. I really want to go in depth with his career revival and help Emre in every way, shape, and form right here. I've applied these player instructions for him in-game. I want him to stay forward, free roam, get him behind on his support runs, on his interceptions. It's going to be conservative. And support on crosses. He's going to stay on the edge of the box for crosses. I think that's going to allow us to get the best out of the Turkish right midfielder. Here at Atalanta, there is an abundance of competition, which I think would be healthy. As you guys know, as some of you know, they have probably more players out on loan than Chelsea do. And that's saying something. That's a statement. It's always a lovely added bonus when these wonder kids have their face scan in the game and thankfully for Emre Moore he has got a brilliant lifelike face scan it just adds the immersion and it's that much more appealing we've gifted him the number seven I know Messi wears the number 10 I'm not going to put that pressure on him and I'm not going to take it off Papu Gomez I think he can create his own legacy here at Atalanta with that number seven his status is that he has that something special and that's what we're trying to bring out of him today the FIFA 17 streets will never forget due to the fact that his highest potential was in that that game sitting at an 87 a lot of hype was surrounding the youngster and right now his potential stands at 79 it's a disappointing drop off and just one other thing in order to make sure this all plays out in Emre Moore's favor we're going to release Hans Hatterbor the Dutch right midfielder therefore our boy Moore is going to be prioritized on that right hand side everything is falling into this man's favor right now a new team a new country new league fresh beginnings he's our one and only right midfielder now he's got to go out there and do the work but we're going to take a look at his stats before we start off this first season simulation. He already has dark greens, acceleration, agility, and balance. You can already start to gauge what type of player he is cutting inside. He's got a low center of gravity and he is a very quick agile on the ball. Strength's going to let him down at 34. 61 stamina definitely does need improving as we take a look at the technical department. It is 81 dribbling and 77 ball control. As an out and out left footer, you can see the comparisons with him and Messi. And in terms of traits, he does have the flair, speed dribbler, and technical dribbler traits that could be very, very useful in-game. With his financial situation, he starts off with a valuation of just shy under 4 mil. 3.9 million with a wage of 21k a week. Now that we have all that admin out the way, Emre's career revival starts right here. Let's see how he performs in Season 1. Now, how has the Turk settled down to life here in Italy? Now that Season 1 is over, it's only a plus 1 to his overall now at a 73. Still has that something special in good form with an important squad role. However, he's unhappy with his playtime and he's not happy about his contract. 
contract. So we might have to sort that out behind the scenes. In terms of his game time, it was 31 appearances, four goals and three assists. So seven goal contributions, better than what he's done at some other clubs. So for his debut campaign, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I do think that the lack of right mid depth did help in terms of him getting some game time. Attributes like acceleration, sprint speed, also just getting better and better jumping and reactions and strength has gone up by a plus two. In terms of the technical department, dribbling, not even improving whatsoever, but it's other elements to his game where he's focusing on such as ball control and finishing now to 69. We have volleys at a 68 as well. And with a 4.9 million pound valuation, it's a plus 25% increase. Just for that icing on top of the cake, he did get that 15 appearances bonus, a little 240k he back pocketed. As I probably did expect, we didn't receive any transfer offers for him off the bat in season one. So we're going to have to wait until some big clubs come swooping around and are willing to pay the big bucks for him. It's humble beginnings. It's a slow start, but we all going to start somewhere. He's no longer at the top of that Wonder Kid game. He's got a lot of work to put in on and off the pitch come season two. As another season comes and goes, will it be second season syndrome right here for Emre Moore? He's got a, a plus two now at a 75 overall. The Turk at 23 still has that something special and he's in good form. Unfortunately, he's unhappy, which isn't an ideal situation, but we'll move. It's the cards we're currently being dealt as the revival is uh, off to a slow and grindy start. In terms of his stats, he's actually played less than last season, only with 25 appearances. He might have picked up a few injuries this season, and he's actually in less games, done more than he did last season. He has had eight goal contributions, six goals, and two assists. The output has only got up a plus one in less games. I mean, that's some good signs. Slow and steady improvement is better than none at all, I guess, as we take a look at the improved attributes. There are upgrades everywhere you look right now. In terms of the physicals, everything's going up. He's now starting to reach the 90s in a few. Balance, agility, and acceleration in the early 90s. Sprint speed at an 86. And the stamina and strength just going up incrementally. Now with the dribbling, getting a plus three. Now at an 84. Ball control still doesn't want to budge as now his financial situation sees him valued on the transfer market just under 10. At 9 million pounds, it's a plus 83% increase to his valuation. 15 appearance bonus he receives in his back pocket. Yet another year, yet another transfer window where no clubs in the world were interested in offering for Emre Moore. He's still got a lot to do to impress. Let's have it then. For season three, we've inked him up a brand new deal and Emre Moore signed on the dotted line for another five years, valued at 13 million pounds now with 40k a week. Let's hope he repays us with some solid performances and we can see the return later down the line. Third season's all over Red Rover and it's another plus two overall growth season. You gotta applaud him on his consistency. It's back to back plus twos. Now finding himself at a 77, three away from that 80 bracket. He's a crucial first team player. He's in good form. So how does that bode for his output? And it was 32 appearances, a career high so far at Atalanta. It's eight goal contributions this time with seven goals and one assist. No matter what the combination, he still manages just to get that eight or seven goal contributions in a season. And he's yet to really have that breakthrough season. Still only at 24 years of age. I mean, he's got time, but let's hope he starts churning out those numbers and his production can go through the roof. Short passing, shot power, volleys, and also finishing in that light green area. He's starting to be an all-rounder in that department and his dribbling ball control definitely are his main strengths. Now sitting at 17.5 million pound valuation, 94% rise. He does definitely have a brilliant future ahead of him now as he's sort Sort of got his career back on track. Now we're starting to look for those goals and assists and for some silverware to add to his name. I don't want to put any pressure on the number seven's name, but it's now or never. Could season five be the year that Emre Moore finally announces himself back on that European stage and as a future Ballon d'Or contender, as you can tell, a plus three to his overall. That is his highest to date. It could quite potentially be his best year ever here at Atalanta. In terms of his morale, he is happy in good form yet again. We've decided to spice the up here. We've trained him in a new position. He is now eligible in playing at a center attack and midfield role. Could well and truly be the heir to Alejandro Gomez now retiring at the end of the season, or he could actually find a move out to a different European club and embark on a new challenge. Now, in terms of his performance and stats, it is a 40 to appearance season. It's his highest ever, but his production levels have been quite the same. They have stayed at a plateau with seven goals and two assists. It is nine goal contributions yet to break into those double digits. Is it his work rates? Is it his professionalism and attitude problems that have gotten in the way of him scoring more goals or getting more assists? I'm not too sure to be fair. It could be many contributing factors, but I'm low-key disappointed. We're about halfway through this career revival simulation. His attributes still improve. He's putting in that work on the 
the training ground now with 95 agility. Will he get a maxed out stat? That is what I want to know. A lot of dark greens, a lot of light greens now emerging and in the technical area, ball control and dribbling in the high 80s, which is what you want to see. And for the first time ever in those technicals, every single stat gets their little own improvement. In terms of his market value, it keeps getting better and better. It is skyrocketed back from a lowly 4 million pounds at the start. Now, five years in, he's valued at 31.5 million. In addition to that 80% upgrade, things are looking good. Life is great for Emre Moore here at Atalanta. However, it's not really good enough for any club in the world to offer in a transfer deal for him or even a loan. So I guess he's still got a point to prove. I like what I see already in season five. It is a Champions League qualification campaign for Atalanta. And the Turkish ex-wonder kid could be seeing some European action for season six. Season five has come and gone and it is a very significant season, not only for more, but at Atalanta. We've hired some new recruits. We've gotten in some new transfers and just increased the quality around him. So I guess it can enable him to score more, assist more, and with better players around, he should become a better player himself. That's the theory behind it. This is how he ranks in the squad. He's not the best, but he's not the worst. He's up there in terms of those influential type players with a plus two to his overall this season. He's now at an 82. A top quality player and the right midfielder still has that something special. He's crucial and he's just content here at the club. He's starting to become a little fan favorite now, five years on. The 26 year old managed 38 appearances eight goals and four assists, 12 goal contributions, and that is some of the best output we've ever seen so far. Still the only right midfielder at the club, so he should be nailed on to that position. Like, no one else should be taking that away from him. In terms of agility, his highest stat, 97. Sprint speed reaching that 91 with the plus two. Every single stat getting their incremental boost besides defensive awareness. Dribbling in the 90s, which is his first stat to do so in that area. The financial situation is looking a bit like this. 43 million pounds. He's nearly at that 50 50 million mark. He's nearly at the half century with a 36% increase on the transfer market. Still getting that 40k a week. Now, come on now, Emre son. Show me what you've got in store for us. Come the sixth season of your career re-simulation. He seems to be extremely happy in every single area possible. Morale is through the roof and he's got a plus one now at an 83. He's entered his prime. He's got three years left until he hits that dreaded 30. And at 27, he's in good form. He's very happy at Atalanta. Show me something good. Surprise me here more. Oh, okay. 39 appearances. He has 10 goals and 4 assists to show for it. And that is 14 goal contributions. His production, it has stayed at a plateau for the first like three seasons and has slowly risen in these last two. He's so close to getting one stat maxed out. Agility now standing at a 98 and acceleration right behind it with 96 with finishing now boosted to an 81. And he was 500k off from that 50 million pound valuation now standing at a 49.5. It's taken six years. He stayed at Bergamo not for the want of trying. No clubs have come in and offered. However, Ajax this time around, they thought they could revive him. The hub of youth in Europe and one of the Dutch's best talent factories have offered 63.4 million pounds for Emre Moore's services from Atalanta. We've rejected that and we still believe that he could achieve his dreams here in Italy and Atalanta is his calling. Just now in this stage of his career, I don't think it's a viable option as they prioritize youth a little bit more and he's in his prime. He's 27. He's out here. He's got trophies to win. He's got competitions to take over. I wasn't wrong when I said he's got competitions to win because over in season seven, it's lucky season seven as the Bergamaschi take out the Serie A title with 95 points. They are Italian champions above Lazio, Inter, Milan, all the big clubs they have dominated. It's Emre Moore's first piece of major silverware, maybe even in his career. I'm not too sure. Someone's going to have to fact check that. What a season it was for La Dea, but how did that affect his season? Was he a major protagonist involved? He's a very happy player at the club, now at 28. However, this is the first season where the Turkish right mid has not improved overall wise. Number seven potentially might have reached his peak already. We might have bit off a bit more than we could chew. I'm expecting some big boy numbers coming out of his performances and it's his best yet with double figures in both goals and assists. It's taken about 10 years in his career to actually do something like that and pull off this performance, but it's taken some hard work. It's been a grind. 28 goal contributions, 14 goals, 10 assists. He can create, he can score them individually and as a team winning the Serie A and being one of the MVPs involved. It's just been dead. It's been flat in the technical and physical department. Attributes just didn't decide to improve whatsoever this season and with a 49 million pound valuation, it's a slight decrease. Is this a sign for the turn of the worst in Emery Moore's career? You're gonna have to find out come season eight. It's season eight. We're starting to get to the business end of the Turk's career. Is it time for a move? Has he done all he could here at Atalanta? I'm gonna go ahead and bite the bullet. Let's add into the transfer list. He's already had an offer 
we're in. They've gone in up front and offered 54.3 million pounds. We could potentially get 69 million out of him. But now I don't think that's the right move. I don't want him to go to a league that he's already been. He's played at Celta Vigo and in Spain it hasn't worked out. So we might wait for another move away and see where he could take his abilities next. Who would have thought adding him onto the transfer list would invite all these offers onto the table? Now we've got a few things to consider. We have a 53.3 million pound offer from Manchester United. PSG also getting involved with 45 mil and now the Foxes over at Leicester City. Two offers from England, one in France, both countries and leagues which he has never played in before. I think the most suitable, it's the most acceptable. They're underdogs. Emery Moore's trying to be an underdog, reviving his career. I think it's a match made in heaven. Could the King Power Stadium be the next move in Emery Moore's career? We're gonna have to find out. He's waving goodbye to the north of Italy. He's done all he could in Bergamo and the Serie A. He leaves as a champion, a club legend. And Emery Moore arrives here in England, Leicester City. 42.9 million pounds. They capture him on a bargain. He's getting 90k a week. A massive pay upgrade. And he just looks fitting in that blue Leicester City kit. I'm sure he can tear it up here at the King Power Stadium and the Premier League. It's a brand new challenge, a brand new country, a brand new culture. I'm keen to see whether he can guide Leicester to silverware just like they did in 2016 or it's going to be a tame end to the Turkish career. Well, despite how he performed this season, I've got a very interesting prospect here at the end of season eight. We have an FA Cup final here at Wembley to look for to as the Foxes take on Liverpool in the big dance. He is not the highest rated player. He is not in that top bracket of players here at Leicester. Now 29 and he's gone down one overall now standing at an 82 and the career revival it was taken off so well. It was slow and steady improvement. He slowly managed to go downhill but he surpassed his FIFA 20 potential nonetheless. He was at a 79 to start off so he has smashed that as he's gone four overalls above it. He's managed 21 appearances at Leicester. Five goals and three assists so he can adapt and perform in other countries and now his stats are starting to take a little bit of a hit. Career revival slowly gone south for a minute and now his valuation standing at 41 million pounds. He's going to be the captain leading out the boys today. I want to see how he performs in game. I want to give him a chance at lifting up an FA Cup trophy. Emre Moore, is he a big game player? Is he a leader? Let's find out. As he leads the lads out today, the Foxes have graced the Wembley pitch and we're now fighting for that trophy against the Liverpudlians. It's Emre, it's probably the first time he's been in this situation. Not too many players can say they've captained their side to glory. Well, for any final in that matter, it is a honourable occasion. It's a moment achievement and we have lift off today he might be small he might not be the tallest but I just know in fact he has so much in the locker to unpack today our number 34 gets fouled already it's gonna come short for the corner and Emery Moore on that favoured left foot. He's going to swing it inside. Is there someone in the middle? And that's going to be a header over the bar. Now Loftus-Cheek back on over to Emery Moore. The little drag back. He fools two defenders in his way. Oh my God, no. Liverpool, Liverpool. Oh, they've completely passed through us. And Liverpool with the back stick. Mane can't get there. We do see Emery Moore making a run on the inside. So Lair puts that... A ball over the top, and he's got some space to work around his defender here. He's got it onto his famous left foot, and Emre Moore, the captain, he steps up to the plate. It's the big occasion, and it does not phase him one bit. 15 minutes in, and he scores on the Leicester end. It was a cheeky little run inside. It might be the player instructions we've got him on. He gets in behind, and it's a Messi-esque finesse shot finish into the top left-hand corner with the left foot, took a bobble, and it bounced up perfectly for him to strike and convert into the back of the net. 1-0 to Leicester, and it's thanks to the captain. Oh, no, Liverpool, and it's sloppy defending. It is a goal right on halftime, and it's an equaliser for the Reds. That is not how I wanted to go into the sheds, as Emre Moore's got a bit of a pep talk to give to his Leicester boys. He can release it again. It's a nice little one-two. Can Gagnon release him? And the Turk now going in between the lines. Can it be another famous left foot finish? And he gets taken down in the box. As Emre got enough left in the tank. Soler puts him through again. No, it's Cutrone with a cheeky little back heel. And the dog's barking, but it's Emre Moore who cuts inside. Ronaldo chop in. And it's terrible stuff from our number 34. The captain fluffs his lines. Oh, no, no. Oh, it's a lovely little passage opening. Cutrone who can set up Emre Moore one on one. Eight minutes to go. And he's going to tuck it into the bottom right. He completely fools Allison and the captain. On his day, he can do anything at Wembley. It's a brace, and the Turk gets his goal. He deserves it after that scuffed chance. He managed a nice little one-on-one -on -one situation. He kept his cool.
kept his composure and just rolled it into the bottom corner. He didn't need power, he just needed accuracy and placement and that means surely we could secure a late FA Cup right in front of the Liverpool fans as well. It's the captain's day out and Leicester might have another piece of silverware to their collection. And it is all over Red Rover full time in the FA Cup final and it's been a glorious two seasons to end off Emre Moore's career revival. He won the Serie A off to the Premier League and it's an FA Cup final man of the match performance to cap it off two trophies in two seasons. I mean it's been quite a little downfall in terms of his overall but the performances and the team efforts the, the trophies, the silverware, that's what matters at the end of the day in football and he's managed to have a brilliant little end to his career now at 29 in his prime at Leicester give us a rating from 1 to 10 how was that career revival let me know down in the comments below always make sure to get in who should we revive next I mean we've got a lot of players Renato Sanchez Adrian Yonezai we've got a lot of options I'll need your suggestions in the comments below make sure if you did go on to enjoy slap a like on it I appreciate all the support you guys have been showing make sure to subscribe turn on those notifications so you never miss out on any of the content arriving to the channel we're on that road to 100k by the end of 2020. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The social links are all linked in the description. As always, I've been BCHD. Have a great day. Stay safe and I'll catch you all in the very next video.